What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado, and today I'm going to talk about the importance of quality control or QC. So this is a brand new batch of liquid culture that we prepared. Um, we're gonna be putting all of these on Etsy. We have about 32 different phenotypes. And one of the most important reasons that we quality control our liquid cultures especially is because it's very hard to tell the difference between uh, mushroom mycelium and any potential contaminants so one quality control that we do right off the bat is when we make our broth we'll let these sit in front of the flow hood for about a week and as long as they remain relatively clear like some of these larger bottles you can see how nice and clear that is that ensures that the liquid broth is in fact sterile. So the next thing we're going to do is take an aliquot from every jar and then we're going to put it onto agar. So agar is a, a tool that is used to, um, to filter out the growth of the mycelium into two dimension. So this right here is a three-dimensional substrate the mycelium will grow in all directions and therefore it can potentially hide some contaminants so what we're going to do is take a small sample from here using a syringe and plate it onto agar and that way if there's any contamination present it will show itself on the agar so then the very last step of quality control is that um, we'll be, we will be using these in our own production, so even though it looks healthy on agar, um, we want to validate that our strains are maintaining their rigor, or especially for some of these new phenotypes, that um, they're a healthy, strong producing mushroom. So by using our quality control petri dishes into our own production, we are ensuring the quality of these these mushroom cultures all right i'm going to go through one by one and um, quality control these on agar and then i will show you guys the results of what we are shooting for when we put our liquid cultures up for sale on etsy all right okay before we get started i just wanted to point out that we poured these plates about a week ago and let them sit so that it validates that the petri dishes are in fact sterile and then if we get contamination from the liquid culture it's probably from the liquid culture and then we will maintain those um, syringes in stock for our own production as well so we'll have plates and liquid cultures that we're going to hold back just in case um, something pops up so it's it's the middle of january i don't expect any contamination but it does happen every once in a while and it's really good to catch it early on before you expand that out um, into your mushroom farm. Alright, before we get started with using the liquid cultures, it's always a good idea to sterilize the injection ports. So I'll just spray a little drop on each of these and then I'll move them to the other flow hood as I take their quality control.
uh, QC'd all of these liquid cultures. You can see it's pretty crowded in this flow hood. Um, I did notice on this jar, the injection port was loose. Usually I use the um, media extraction bottles. Um, and I just wanted to point out some of these spherical colonies. So my thoughts are that this one could possibly be contaminated um, because of that loose port on the lid. But that's the importance of QC. I also found a few injection ports that, you know, had some wear and tear on them that I'll probably be replacing in this next round. And um, some of the filters like this are probably reaching the end of its life. So it's always a good idea to go through your lids, replace anything that looks out of place or um, at the end of its life. And I'm gonna leave them in the flow hood. Um, I turned it off just for sound purposes, but I'm gonna leave them in here with the flow hood running for about four or five days and then I'm gonna check them for growth. Um, some of them, you know, had very low amounts of mycelium, like the bear's head, which is a little bit of a slow grower. But because it was clear, I feel like um, there's either gonna be no growth on the Petri dish or small amounts of the bear's head, which would be good. Um, other than that, I will um, do an update once we get all these QCs figure out what was in this brown oyster and um, I'll be replacing the rest of these lids. So check out our Etsy shop Fresh Fungi. Um, you can find that in the link below or through our website. I will be posting uh, all of these liquid cultures as soon as they QC and usually I'm going through about um, a batch a month now so my QCs are getting more and more dialed in every single time there's a couple things i i could have done better just for workflow processes but i've got my backup um, syringes here that i'll be using in about three months for my production and then i i'll have all these plates and um, once i do my my first runs for fruiting i will verify the health of these otherwise i would just go back to the g1 slant cultures and any of these that do show up positive i'll just go back to the slant mother culture um, inoculate a new liquid culture and that way i i will always have backups of all the strains that i'm working with all right guys give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video i'll be doing an update soon and i'll post it at the end um, and then i'll just kind of do a a slideshow of all the different mycelium so you can recognize what they look like on this uh, beautiful black auger. All right, much love. What's up? So it's been five days since we did our liquid culture quality control test, and I'm going to go through these plate reads and show you guys the importance of why we do these tests on every single batch. So um, I'll get into that in a second and I'll just flip this camera around and we'll go through all the different um, mycelium, kind of point out what I'm seeing and um, something really important on why we do this for every single batch. Okay guys, so I'm just going to go through these dishes kind of one at a time here. So they're labeled with the names, this is the Golden Oyster M6. Um, King Stropharia. So notice how fluffy that mycelium is compared to an oyster mushroom. Then we've got our uh, Namiko, a bunch of the phenotypes from our breeding project. So it, it's really nice to see these coming out clean. And when I say that they're clean, I'm just talking about um, the purity of the mycelium. So I'm not seeing any bacteria or yeast or mold on these dishes. Beautiful Piapino, the pink oyster rosebud. You can see the fast, fast growth on this black charcoal auger. There's um, some chestnut, but now up oh, some enoki, black falcon oyster. 
another King Strafaria. So we've got a couple strains of that. And I'm hoping this summer I can work on selecting out the strongest strains. And you can see this uh, Aresium coralloides. It's looking a little bit slow at growing, but um, I don't see any contamination. So some of the heresiums like bear's head are a little bit slower than, you know, the traditional lion's mane. This is a blue oyster looking really healthy. Brown oyster number seven. So this one, I was suspicious, but you can see the nice healthy growth. Um, so that's one reason why I like to do these on every batch because even the one that looked kind of questionable is uh, turning out to be just a weird strain. And then this is our lion's mane. You can see the really thin filaments on that one. We've got our golden oyster M7. This one looks like a really good strain. Another blue oyster. And we've got our turtle shell beach. Piapino. Turkey tail. Brown oyster. Golden oyster. Namico. Some more. This is a cordyceps. Two different cordyceps cultures. Namico number nine. So a little bit slower on this one. And then you can see We've got a uh, Morcella importuna and very fast culture. This one was almost colonized in two or three days compared to our bear's head, which you can see some colonies just starting out after five days. So very slow grower. And then I'll show you guys what you should not hope to accomplish. So this is a shiitake mushroom. And you can see that is a classic trichoderma mold along with a wild or wild bluefoot strain. So one thing I wanted to point out is that look at the liquid cultures that these came from. So the bluefoot definitely looks questionable. There's some darker regions and it doesn't really look the same. And I really think that this came from the uh, injection port just being too old. I tried to throw some tape over it and it clearly um, did not help. So that's the reason for that one. And then this shiitake mushroom, you can see the filter disc was kind of cockeyed. So I think that that was the main problem. But if you look at this culture, there's not really a way to verify its cleanliness. So that is why we do these on every test batch. All right guys, so we've got most of our liquid cultures. It's about 38 to 40 different strains. And then two of them um, unfortunately had some trichoderma. So I will go back to my slant cultures, my mother cultures, and do two new liquid cultures from that and um, go through the whole quality control once more. But I just wanted to share with you the importance of doing quality control for liquid cultures because if I didn't plate this out onto agar, there would be no way of knowing that this culture was contaminated. Just side by side comparison, this is a chestnut mushroom and it looks very similar to this shiitake. So I hope you guys understand that concept and appreciate all the the work that goes into sending out 100 percent clean syringes if you're interested we will be posting a bunch of um, syringes coming up probably this weekend um, i'm going to be pulling them and i'm just waiting for some labels to come in but check out our etsy fresh fungi that's uh, etsy.com backslash shop backslash fresh fungi for quality controlled liquid cultures and we'll be posting our new phenotypes early in the springtime just in time for those summer grows. 
All right, guys, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. And until next time, much love.